Get this seven times and is the author of the book, Learn How to Increase Your Chances of Winning the Lottery. General, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me today. Such an exciting topic. Uh, Richard, you've won seven lottery grand prizes. Let seven. me guess, are, are you are you picking the tickets for, for this one? Yes, yes, I've already bought my tickets. And let's just make sure, because we don't want to mislead your audience, I've won seven lottery game grand prizes. I haven't won the lottery seven times. Okay. Because if I did, we wouldn't be here talking. I'd be <laughs> lost on an island somewhere. But I've won seven lottery game grand prizes, and yes, I have bought my tickets for tonight. And you've accumulated just over a million dollars before taxes from those winnings over the year. Most would call that just pure luck. But you say there's a real science to picking the right numbers. Can you walk us through it? Yeah. Well, first of all, I... I, I I've been playing for 20 something years. And so over the over that length of time I've developed a method that really works. And I've won millions of dollars, not just my last 3 just total over a million, but I've won millions of dollars. And and it's a matter of a lot of things that I tried and didn't work and I threw them out the window, things that I tried that did work and I put them together and as I used them I started winning more often. Next thing I know I won my first grand prize, my second and then here we are today I've won seven grand, grand prizes. So walk us through these tips. The first is don't use the quick pick numbers generated from the store's computer. Absol Why not? Absolutely because every time you buy a quick pick and for those that are watching the show and don't even know what a quick pick is, that's when you hand the clerk a couple of dollars and you say give me a, give me a couple tickets for tonight's drawing. Okay. That's a quick pick. The computer picks out your numbers for you. Every time you buy a quick pick, you're getting a different set of numbers. So your odds are always going to be at their worst. In Powerball, the odds are 1 in 292 million. You realize how astronomical it is? That's yeah. crazy, you know? So if you play your own numbers, if you play your own numbers, and you continuously play your own numbers and stick with them, okay, this is going to sound crazy, but every time you lose, your odds actually get a little bit better. Very little, very little, but they actually get a little bit better. And you also say go beyond birthdays. Yes. Most people who do take my advice and pick their own numbers, which is the right thing to do, but then they make the mistake. They only buy birthdays, anniversaries, whatever. So what are they doing? All of their numbers are between 1 and 31 because the most num days in a month are 31. Okay. Well, like in Powerball, you have to pick five numbers between 1 and 69. So you're not playing numbers 32 through 69. So you're actually decreasing your chances of winning. So if you're going to do the right thing and pick your own numbers, make sure you stretch them out over the gambit of the numbers that are available to you in the game you're playing. Don't go buy a calendar month, okay? And don't change the numbers. Play consistently. What do you mean by that? Okay. Once you've chosen your numbers, and in my method I teach you how to research that set of numbers you've chosen, whether it's good or not, and it's very simple to do. Uh, now you, there's two things you do. You never, ever, ever change those numbers. Not any one of those numbers. Always make sure you play that same set of numbers over and over and over again. And second thing is never miss a drawing. Play, be consistent, play them always. So in Powerball, the drawings are Wednesday night and Saturday night. So every week you buy that ticket or tickets if you're buying more than one, every Wednesday, every Saturday, every week. So, Professor, uh, you've been sitting here listening to what uh, Richard has been advising those at home that are participating. I know you're not a proponent of lotteries in general, but what are your thoughts on Richard's tips? I think his tip to uh, pick your own numbers and uh, buy bigger than 31 is, uh, makes sense in terms of um, reducing the probability that you're going to be sharing the price. Because if he's right, and I think he is, that most people choose dates, numbers that have meaning to them, chances are the meaning is in uh, the lower numbers. You know, like seven is their lucky number. Uh -huh. So that reduces your chance that a little bit, perhaps, that you may not have to share it. I don't think it increases your chance of winning. Well, and let's look at those chances because you've broken it down for us. You say uh, you're more likely to die from an asteroid strike, uh, become a movie star, or get struck by lightning than, than win the lottery. Uh, you also have a coin with you. Give us another uh, comparison. Oh, well, um, if, if we assume this is a fair coin, probability of heads and tails is a half, and you toss it, um, you know, heads and tails repeatedly, for 55 times, you will generate in, and record the number of a sequence of heads and tails. You will generate an event that has a smaller probability than winning the lottery. Wow. And you will be witness to it. Yeah. You can't reproduce it. 
And uh, the lottery, as we know, is a cash cow for states. Total spending in lotteries just last year, $70 billion, which breaks down roughly to $300 per adult. Economists I know have always looked down upon lotteries because they call it a regressive tax. Can you explain what that means? Well, the, the price of a lottery ticket is the same regardless of your income. And since for, with a very, very high probability, you're going to get no reward for giving that money, that $2 away. So you have to look at it, if this is if you only buy one ticket. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at it as, a, um, as throwing $2 away. And historically, those who've been attracted to lotteries are those who have less money, correct? And, yes. and, and so the, one argument could be made that as the lottery becomes bigger and the pool becomes bigger, more people participate. So it's not just the lower income well, it also Americans. It becomes a better deal. Yes. Because, Explain how it becomes a better deal. Well, right now the, the uh, price is $1.5 billion. So if you were to win it and you were to win it alone, uh, you would get the $1.5 billion unless you took it right now, in which case it's reduced to $900 million. Mm -hmm. well, let's suppose you look at it as $1.5 billion. If you divide that by the chances of winning, which is $292 million around that, then it's over $5. And they're only charging $2. So the fair price is around $5. They're charging $2. You're netting $3. It's a pretty good deal. Yeah. <laughs> well, Richard, what are your thoughts on what the professor is saying? And I want to ask you specifically on managing money, because if you are lucky enough to be a winner, you have an option, right? You can either take the lump sum, which in this case would be 930, a mere 900, yeah. I think, and $30 million, yeah. Yeah. or you take an annuity that pays $1.5 billion out over 30 years. Well, first of all, I got to crack up because the professor said something that I hear all the time. You have a better chance of being struck by lightning than you do of winning the lottery. And where do I live? I live in Orlando, which is the lightning capital of the <laughs> world. Well, there and, you go. And I've never been struck by lightning yet. <laughs> yes, you won you know. seven times. Yes. So, you know, there, I, I've always been amused by that, by that. I mean, he's right. He's right, you know. I, but I've always been amused by that statistic. Actually, I'm not really right. Because what that probability is calculated in a very simple way. You know, the number of people struck by lightning, how many times, and so forth, how many... But you have to be outside pretty much to be struck by lightning and yeah. you have to be outside. 24-7 almost. Well, yeah. And then also like when a storm is yeah. most yes. people. I mean, there are people who play golf during thunderstorms and, you know, a lot of them don't reproduce. <laughs> most sensible people go indoors <laughs> yeah. when there's a storm most is what you're saying. Right, you know, yeah. so. so now getting to your answer about managing the money, uh -huh. right? Okay, if you win, what do you do, right? right. Is that what you're looking at? Yes, yes. Okay. And what, because, because most experts uh, that I've spoken to and uh, the written articles suggest that actually taking the annuity would be a smarter investment decision. What did you do and what is your advice? Okay, my advice is get an accountant and a financial planner that have a good track record and they know what they're doing and have them tell you what to do. I'm not a financial planner or an accountant. I would never tell someone how to spend their money or how to collect it. That's up to what their personal financial situation is, okay? Mm -hmm. I have always taken the lump sum. That's just me personally, mm -hmm. you know? So it depends on each person's individual financial situation as to whether or not they should take the lump sum or take the annuity. So hypothetically, let's say you are the sole winner of the $1.5 billion lottery today, tonight. Yeah. Uh, would you take the lump sum or the annuity? Not only would I take the lump sum, but people would never see me again. <laughs> I will disappear. Even, even knowing that 930 million, a paltry 930 million, yeah. you're going to actually be giving almost half of that away to, yeah. to the government for taxes. Yeah. yeah, you'd still take it. Absolutely. Well, now, now keep in mind, if you take the 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 lump sum, it's like from 1.5 million to like 900 million. Yes. But then you got to pay taxes on the 900 million. Right. So you'll end up with about 600,000 and something, or yeah. 600 million and something. You, you, could, you could subside on I that, I'm sure. I can live with that, yeah. And finally, I want to ask you about office pools, because a lot of people at many companies across the country, whether or not they'd like to admit to, uh, actually get together and pool their money, thinking that the odds are better if there's a larger group. What is your advice on that? I know that you have an opinion on it, and I want to ask you, Professor, as well, about the odds of a larger group putting money together to buy lottery tickets. All right, it's common sense that a person who buys 10 tickets is not going to have as good of a chance of winning as a person who buys 100 tickets. He's going to have a better chance of winning. That doesn't mean he will, but he has a better chance. So I've always been a proponent of lottery pools. Yes, be in a lottery pool, because you're now buying in larger amounts, therefore you're increasing your chances of winning. 
The problem is most lottery pools are run very poorly. Okay, that's why you see sometimes in the news where this guy is running to the lottery office to try to cash this ticket real quick to find out that he was the guy that was running the office lottery pool. And now everybody in the office is saying, wait a minute, that's not his ticket. That's one of our lottery pool tickets. And he's saying, no, 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 no. I bought this ticket with my own money. So everything I have done over the last few years to help people win and to help people increase their chances. Well, so we decided to tackle that problem. So we have created a lottery pool, a national lottery pool called Lottolicious. And people can join it. It is run very professionally. We, we send them reports on what we've bought, how much they've won, so it's done the right way. Because it's much easier getting everyone pooling their money together before Absolutely. a winning ticket is actually announced. Yes. And Professor, well, should, I, should I, people be participating in, in pools? I mean, I agree with, with what Richard said. Uh, people, why not? Except for the problems. I mean, if you buy two tickets, you're twice as likely to win as if you had one. If you buy, if you're in a pool of 10 people, you're, I mean, you have to divide the winnings, of course, but you're still, the point is to win. And that has happened multiple times in the money. past, but you say don't forget that the quick pick numbers is not the route to take. The quick pick numbers is not the route to take. Pick your own numbers. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for your advice. Congratulations on your winnings. And, thank Professor, you. thank you so much for your insights and breaking it down for us numerically. It was nice meeting you, <laughs> Professor. Thanks. Sure. Happy. And we always look forward to hearing what you have to say. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter at Bianca Goladriga and use hashtag Yahoo Live to let us know what you think about tonight's record jackpot. And the, to quote the Hunger Games, may the odds be ever in your favor. Thanks so much for watching.